Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Our second lesson is a reading from the Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from the mortals, whether from you or from others though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also ourselves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the neighbor your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments thank all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this, this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In our lesson from Matthew's Gospel, which we just heard Jesus say, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now I know that this teaching, this precept, is familiar to all of us here. We call it the Great Commandment. And it forms the very heart of Christian morality and ethics. We as a church and as individuals try to live it out in many ways. We express our love for God in our corporate worship, in our private prayers and study. And generally, in just seeking to try to put God first in all things. We try to love our neighbors through service. Service to other people, service to those in our church, service to those outside our church. We do that also through welcoming newcomers, the stranger, and as the baptismal covenant says, by seeking and serving Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves and in striving for justice and peace among all people, by respecting the dignity of every human being. 
The great commandment as Jesus expressed it to his questioners in today's gospel and by extension to us isn't entirely new. We just heard what we might call an earlier version of it from the book of Leviticus. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the rich. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. One obvious difference between what Jesus taught and what we just read from Leviticus is the way Leviticus expressed it almost entirely in what I will call negative commandments. That is, you shall not. You shall not. And then, with a very specific act which the you shall not prohibits. Injustice, slander, hatred of kin. This pattern is familiar to us from the Ten Commandments. You shall not have strange gods before me. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. Again, we see a you shall not, and then a specific act which that you shall not prohibits. A moment ago I said that the great commandment as Jesus expressed it to his questioners and to us isn't entirely new. And as we've just seen, that's true. But there is more, much more to it than that. Jesus took negative prohibitions and turned them around into a positive commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I would also suggest that in turning the specific commandments from negative to positive, he's also doing something else. He is expanding the scope and the breadth of what the commandments are all about. And not just by a little, but by a lot. A whole lot. First of all, the command to love neighbor is not limited only to one's kin or one's tribe or one's own people or those who I like or those who look like me. It's inclusive. It's all-inclusive of all people everywhere. Additionally, rather than giving us specific you shall nots or even you shall do's, Jesus expands the whole moral universe and with it expands what it means to follow him. The religious world of the Pharisees to whom Jesus was speaking in today's Gospel lesson was very much taken up with rules and rule keeping. There were over 600 such commandments and the rule and the rules by which the pious and observant Pharisee was supposed to observe all of these. The very question which the lawyer asked Jesus reflects that rule based mindset. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Now Matthew tells us that the question wasn't sincere. It was designed to try to entrap Jesus into saying something which they could then use against him. But the point remains. To the Pharisees, fidelity to God and the covenant with Israel was largely a matter of keeping the rules. Now, no one should misunderstand. I am not saying that we don't need some rules. Every human society, every religious society, even the church, needs rules. Without rules, we have chaos, and chaos benefits no one. What Jesus is telling us is not that we don't need some rules, but that we are to look deeper than the mere letter of the law. It's not enough to settle for observing the externals of religion and morality. As the prophet says, God desires to write his law on our hearts. And as the Apostle Paul tells us in today's lesson from the letter to the Thessalonians, what we do and the sufferings we bear are not just ticking off some boxes somewhere, that we've done this or not done that, but they are to please God who tests our hearts. We cannot be satisfied by merely keeping the externals of the law. But as Psalm 1, which we just prayed together, says, 
Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on His law day and night. If we meditate on the law of the Lord, we are seeking for more than its black letter meaning so that we can put it into our little book of do's and don'ts. But we are looking for its intent and to see how it fits into that whole moral universe. And then most importantly, to make it our own. So that we become, as Psalm 1 continues, like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. As followers of Christ, we are familiar with the great commandment to love God and to love neighbor. Let us see this commandment to love, not as a burden, though, frankly, at times obeying it will be hard, sometimes harder than we'd like to admit. But rather let us see it as an invitation, an invitation to go beyond mere rule keeping an invitation to go beyond ourselves and our self-imposed limitations and to seek and to find with God's help new ways of living as our presiding bishop Michael Curry is so fond of saying, the way of love. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and then was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of eternal life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son he is first and glorified. He has spoken to the Christ. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning are Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace in our earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light of perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. For those who are stricken with COVID-19, for all those who care for them, and for all who are struggling with loneliness in this time of necessary social isolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, especially Rick, Eric, Carrie, Melissa, Tim, Dave, Sarah, Barb, Rick, Bev, Bob, Teresa, Will, 
Norma, Cherry Ann, Maris, Liz, Tiffany, Daxton, Mary Beth, and Ron. Are there others? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Wales. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the people and the parish of St. Christopher's in River Hills. Lord, let us hear, Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the families of Brian and Kathy Sonier, Chuck Staley and Barb Manufico, Adam and Christina Swanson. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the cooperating churches of Sussex and the community that we serve together, and especially for the volunteers who continue to serve during this difficult time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Diocesan Haiti product, Project and the people at Parish of St. Mark's in the Jeanette, Haiti, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We rejoice with Jeremy Shearer and Mike Connor, who are celebrating the anniversary of their births this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not called you with our whole heart. We have not called our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we may not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and in walking your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgiving your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and with the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Blessed be God in prayer. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give him thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of our life, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are thy holy glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We'll be praying for Christic prayer be. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken to the prophets, and above all the world, word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and truth, out of sin and into righteousness out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, all of our patron and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also yes. with you. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we leave for the those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.